Thanks, David. Uh, I want to say thanks, first of all, to all of you guys for being here. Uh, David was right. It was a very rainy day this morning. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys all for coming out. And thank you to the TED team for putting this on. Um, this is really awesome. Uh, I'm a huge fan of TED. And it's really special for me because uh, the whole story I'm kind of telling today it really comes full circle here. Um, it starts when I was actually in this room at TEDx Terry Talks 2011. Uh, I was one of the <laughs> attendants. I think I decided to come like 24 hours beforehand, so it wasn't a, a huge um, a planned event for me. Uh, and I was sitting at the back, no less. But at that conference, um, we were all asked as attendants to write down an idea. Uh, on a, a piece of paper, it can be any idea, just pitch an idea, and the best couple ideas would get a little bit of funding to help kickstart idea to, to become a reality. And so this is where uh, my whole story starts. And I'm going to walk you through that a little bit today. Um, but my idea that I wrote that day, it didn't actually come from much of an idea um, as much as it was a reaction. And this was in reaction to the kinds of experiences that uh, I'm familiar with, but I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And that's when I was kind of going home at the end of the day, and I was sitting on the bus with my head, kind of leaning against the glass, retired from a long day of work or school or whatever it was. And the city is whizzing me by, and, and I'm not even sure what I'm looking at. I'm not even sure what, what is there. But it's just, I, I kind of see these dystopian, almost blank, just kind of boring, really, uh, walls on, on my way to and from work every day. And like I mentioned, my face is blank, and I'm tired. And it's kind of a point where I'm wondering, is the city reflecting my blank face, or is my blank face reflecting the city? Or even worse, maybe, maybe both. And so I started thinking about uh, these, these blank walls. And, uh, and really, as my story progressed, I, uh, I, I realized these weren't actually blank walls. Um, and, and one person that really helped me understood that was this guy, Steve. Now, Steve uh, is, is a friend of mine and an artist uh, I met. Uh, and he actually goes by Steve, the creative individual. Uh, he's a really awesome guy. And, and one thing he showed me was that these weren't actually blank walls. These were blank canvases. Uh, this is Steve outside of uh, this corner of Canby and Hastings. This is actually where we met him, uh, just outside <laughs> painting one of his, his pieces, the beautiful mural. And it's a really cool piece, uh, kind of telling the love story between a baker and a chef and this culinary love affair between this, uh, these, these two people who were, who were cooking and actually falling in love with each other over their, their mutual shared uh, love of the smell of each other's cooking. And it's this beautiful kind of poetic stanza that, that talks about this baker and the chef and how they're falling in love. And I got to talking to Steve and kind of what he does. And it turns out he does, he does a lot of these, uh, turning these blank canvases into these beautiful pieces of art. And it made me think of these blank walls differently. They weren't just these boring, kind of almost dystopian-esque um, just blankness that was passing me by on the bus. Instead, I saw these exciting opportunities. And Steve is a real big testament to that. This actually uh, isn't like this anymore, this, this one wall uh, that you're, you're seeing on the screen right now. It's actually a sewage pump house in New Westminster here in BC. And if you've been to it any time recently, you see it doesn't look like this. It now looks like this. So this is Steve the Korean individu Individual's piece called Puzzled. Um, it's one of the most beautiful pieces, I think, uh, in the Lower Mainland or anywhere nearby that you can visit. And again, I reiterate, this used to be a sewage pump house before, with cars whizzing by, just seeing it, you know, houses around the area, and it really didn't show much value. It was more of an eyesore. And instead, now it, now it is actually a piece of value for the community. People love it. People that, uh, that drive by it every day get to enjoy it. And it's actually gotten a great reaction from the community. A lot of people were really excited about it. This is Steve kind of uh, standing in front of his, his proud mural um, discussing what he did for the, for the city of New West. And he actually worked with the city to do this. So the city actually shows uh, that they demonstrate that they actually appreciate this kind of value that, that art can have. And Steve does uh, all kinds of pieces um, all over Vancouver and, and all over North America. This is one piece he also did here in Vancouver uh, in the downtown east side. And what's really cool about this piece is that he was actually able to uh, get together with a group of kids uh, that were actually at-risk at youths. So kids that um, often some of these kids had actually already gotten in trouble for things like vandalism and graffiti and tagging. And instead of, uh, instead of just punishing them, 
the city of Vancouver actually got together with Steve and a couple of other artists and were able to put together this program for them to actually do a mural together. And uh, in doing so, uh, these artists were actually able to mentor these youths and show them that, you know, uh, it's great that you have this desire to express yourself, but don't vandalize things. And, you know, there's, there's ways that you can actually have a platform for your expression. And so this is a great way that uh, this platform to, for these artists to give their expression really shows true in a way that, uh, you know, other artists can help other artists get this, this, this platform off the ground. And it's not just Steve and it's not just Vancouver, this is all over the world. Uh, one of my favorite artists uh, that I want to kind of give recognition to is named Alice Pasquini. She's based out of Rome, Italy, but you can find her work all over Europe, Asia, South America. And she always does these really amazing pieces that really kind of constitute this, this subversive insights into our society. Um, quite often, she's, she's, uh, her subjects are, are female with long flowing hair. And quite often, there's, there's kids in, in her pictures. So she's trying to kind of um, instill the sense of community and, and these, these values. So quite often, people think of street art as, as graffiti. And, and there's that stigma around these at-risk youths and, and um, the, the kind of gang violence vandalism. But quite often, you're not talking about this. You're talking about these amazing, wonderful pieces that actually reflect some of the insights and issues that we are desperate to talk about in our society. And I think it's amazing that artists can get a platform like this to uh, actually express these issues and, and how they feel about them in our society. Another one that some of you might be familiar with, and the TED community definitely is, is JR. Uh, JR actually won the 2011 TED Prize to, uh, to go out there and, and put his art around the world. So he was given a, a, a tremendous amount of funding by TED and by uh, other third party individuals to be able to actually do these pieces. And he was, he was uh, able to do something with this project called the Inside Out Project, where he actually gave the power back to the people. So he was using just uh, paper and ink and paste to put up these pieces of, of photography around the world. This one's actually in the Gaza Strip in the West Bank. And what he did in this project was he was actually putting up pieces, um, these, these, these pictures, these photographs of Israelis next to Palestinians. And he wouldn't label them. And often they'd be doing the same job, like two taxi drivers. So they'd be making the same kind of face. And the point was quite evident when people would go up to him and ask him, you know, Which, what are you doing here? And he'd tell them, you know, I'm putting up the picture of an Israeli and a Palestinian right next to each other. And then the second question would be, well, which one's which? And quite often, he wouldn't say anything, and no one would be able to tell. So through this power of art and photography, he was able to make a, a quite a, a big statement um, in, in quite a literally conflicted area. Another uh, project he was able to do with the same, uh, same project was uh, in, at the Russian embassy in Berlin. And this was actually some, uh, more of a kind of group of people that actually took this project and were able to make it their own. So here they actually, everyone in this photo is holding up another, a photo of a loved one of theirs who identifies as a, as a homosexual orientation. So they're out there in front of this Russian embassy um, kind of showing that they're here and that uh, they want to stand up for their rights and that they are actually just as uh, valuable as a human as, as anyone else. Um, and a, a huge statement to say here in, at the, in front of the Russian embassy um, in Berlin. So really be able to take these projects and make them what they wanted to make and say what they wanted to say. And this is all over the world. Um, Norway, this is one of my favorite uh, pieces to think about here in Vancouver. Uh, probably evident for this morning, <laughs> kind of relevant. Um, but yeah, I try to think about this piece every time I go out in the rain uh, and I'm feeling a little bit grumpy, trying to embrace life for a little bit, right? And uh, it's pretty easy, you don't need words. It's just on the street reminding everyone to kind of embrace their inner child and, and smile a bit, even on a rainy day. This is a piece by Eduardo Cobra, an amazing artist that does pieces all over the world. He's based out of Sao Paulo, um, but he does pieces in New York and, uh, and, and some in Europe as well. And uh, this is a piece that is actually, uh, some of you may recognize, um, an homage to a, a famous photograph taken on uh, V-Day uh, at the end of World War II when this sailor grabbed and kissed this, this random woman uh, <laughs> coming back to shore on, uh, on New York. And being able to kind of immortalize uh, this, this photography and, and, and what it means on a, on a giant mural in New York with all these colors and, and love and, and, uh, and, and, the, and this beautiful piece, uh, I think is a real big testament to what Eduardo Cobra as an artist could do. There's another one by a few, art, few artists in Buenos Aires. 
Uh, it's a little more off the wall, I think, than a couple of them I showed. But what's really cool about Buenos Aires is that they actually have some, some uh, pretty progressive laws around street art where all you really need is the property manager or the property owner's uh, permission to put up a piece of art. So what happens is quite often a lot of artists will approach um, a, ma a manager of a storefront or something and ask, can I put up a piece of art on, on your wall? And quite often uh, the, the response will be positive and, and the store owner will actually get more business because of this amazing piece of art in Buenos Aires. Uh, another example is Sao Paulo. Um, quite similarly, they have some progressive uh, policies around street art. Um, and what's interesting is that Sao Paulo actually has an interesting story because in 2007, Sao Paulo actually banned advertisement, outdoor advertising. And in the case of like a week or maybe even 24 hours, there was literally 1,300 billboards, um, bus, bus signs, everything you can think of that's an outdoor, a piece of outdoor advertising was stripped down. And what was left? An entire city full of blank canvases. And the street artists came in and everyone was really supportive and really happy that they weren't just kind of bombarded by this advertising anymore. And instead they had these amazing reflective pieces that they could think about and, 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 and it really decorated their city to be a special and beautiful city. Now what's interesting is that this actually attracted some of the advertisers that uh, were there in the first place. This is a, piece, a couple pieces by General Electric. Now if you notice something, there's no GE logo here, right? There's, this is actually a piece commissioned by GE, and they were actually able to support some artists to put up these pieces. And in doing so, when, uh, Sao Paulo <laughs> had two more beautiful pieces in their city. And they, they were able to kind of express the values that General Electric has. Um, one of these is about health and, and uh, human happiness, and the other one's about transportation and energy. You know, going back to General Electric's main theme, but instead uh, expressing it in a way that is more on par of what the, the people of the city kind of valued. And, and it was a, a very positive reaction. So through all this understanding and thinking about street art and this, this kind of exploration I've had over the last couple of years since I was here in TEDx 2011, um, I really tried to think about what, what was important around street art and what were these these main takeaways uh, from everything I learned. And the first one was, it's really a platform for artists. So it's a public forum, a public space that everyone can see. It's free, so anyone in the public, there's no discrimination as to who can go see it. And it's, it's really a, a place that uh, these artists can get their exposure and get their talent seen. So it's amazing how um, giving, giving people like Steve, the creative individual, uh, a, a platform for his work can really do, uh, have something uh, of, of value like that pump house in New West. Or even better, the uh, platform he was able to give these at-risk youths in the downtown east side um, to give them a, a, an outlet to create their uh, expression. So a platform for artists was kind of the key, the key value I, I found behind street art. The next one was kind of this blur between the physical and digital realms. So street art has really gotten rise in the last 20 years because of the internet. Quite often, uh, like in the case of JR, it's just paste and, and, and paper and ink. It's not meant to be permanent. It actually comes off with the wind and the weather and the way that it was actually designed. Um, so these are quite often transient pieces and often another piece of art could go on top of a piece of art you know, less than 24 hours later. So having the internet to be able to not only um, maintain these pieces throughout time, but also share them throughout the world is really special. Here's another piece by JR uh, that he was able to give people the opportunity to express themselves. And this is actually um, a, a slum living area in, in uh, Nairobi, uh, sorry, in, in Kibera. And uh, they were able to actually uh, kind of show the world that they were there the, through these pieces and through uh, the, the ability to share it through the internet. And finally, kind of the most obvious and, 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 and most striking uh, value I found through the street art was this ability to inspire discourse. This ability to put something on the wall and have someone walk by on their daily commute and they actually stop in their tracks because they're taken aback by whatever art or issues are represented in that piece. And I think that's something 
quintessentially special about art, and especially street art, because it's in the public, and it's in a place that, you know, if you're with another person and you walk by and you see that piece, you're going to discuss whatever is represented there. And being able to actually garter that, that discourse and harness that, that ability for a society to reflect upon itself, I think is something very important for a culture to be able to do. So these three factors, the platform for artists, the blur between the physical and digital divide, and this, this uh, ability to inspire discourse, that's really the three takeaways I took from street art over the last few years of thinking about it and developing these ideas. So going back to TEDx, Terry Talks 2011. That idea I wrote down that day kind of <coughs> encompassed these three, these three areas. And I didn't really know, again, what that idea was going to be. It was more of a reaction at the time. But what it came up with was, uh, and some friends of, our, of mine, we actually built this app called Curb. Curb is an app for street art. And it takes in, into, into consideration these three things that we've learned. So it's a, it's, a, it's a platform that artists can get exposure because uh, it's free, first of all, so everyone can, can use it if you have an iPhone. <laughs> and, uh, and you can actually check out all the amazing pieces of street art around the world or nearby actually on your phone uh, and, and be able to see where they are in the world. So it's an amazing platform for artists to gain exposure. And of course, it's a, it's a blur between the physical and digital divide because you have it on your phone and it, and it uses the internet but also, what is especially unique about Curb is that we are actually able to take the GPS location from every picture you take and upload to Curb and pinpoint it on a map. So anytime you're in a city you don't know, or even a city you know really well, you can actually check and see what pieces are nearby. And you might see some amazing talent in an alley that you never walked around, and an amazing artist that you've never seen before. So it's a way to actually give exposure to that artist and, and, and help uh, his art transcend both time and space. And finally, I think, again, this is one of the most important things. It's a platform where we can actually discuss this discourse that, uh, that we're inspired by for this art. So through the comments on Curb and through liking it and through the popular art uh, kind of coming to the top, a society or the users can actually really discuss some of these issues, whether it's uh, Steve's piece in, in New West or some of JR's pieces around the world. People can actually see what is this giving back to us and, 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 uh, and, and discuss the issues and you know, maybe even have a great debate on Curb. So this is what we were able to do. Uh, this is how we kind of approach these three areas of, uh, of, of gaining this platform for artists, this blur of the physical and digital divide and inspiring this discourse. And it's really uh, an exciting kind of time for us because we just launched this app in the last month and we're looking forward to uh, tons of more users coming online and, and sharing and uploading art from all over the world that we can discuss and, and hopefully go check out one day in person. Our goal down the line is to try and get as many artists as we can, inspire as much discourse, and really build a platform for these artists so that hopefully we can help even be uh, helping to, to fund them and, and help them put more art up. So that's Curb, an app for street art. And our, our main goal is really to show that the world is more than just unused advertising space. Thank you very much.